Hey guys, welcome back to Beach Garage. Well, now that we have the engine disassembled and we have all the parts at the machine shop, which is going to take them a while to do, I want to clean these parts. And the question I get quite often is, how do I clean parts? And I use different chemicals to clean different parts of the engine, the internal parts versus the external parts, and paint removal. So let's go through some cleaning some parts. I'll show you how I clean parts inside and out, how you can make sure the parts are clean, thoroughly clean. And uh, we'll go over the chemicals and some of the uh, processes to get them nice and clean. So let's take a look at our chemicals. Now before we get started, you want to take sure, make sure you're taking the proper safety precautions. Uh, whatever chemical you're using, always read the label and make sure that you're reading and you're understanding how to take the proper safety cautions. If there is nothing on the container, make sure you're always wearing gloves because most chemicals, especially solvents, will absorb right into your skin and take the oil off your skin. Wear uh, safety glasses for your eyes. And if, if you're in an enclosed area, vapor, just put on a respirator just to make sure. Now the first thing I, I'm going to do, I'm going to take these valve, clean, valve covers and I want to clean the paint off of those. And uh, there's a chemical I buy from Miles Chemical. Miles Chemical, I think they're uh, Miles Chemical Solutions LLC. I think they're in Ohio. And I buy this five gallons at a time and it's just a paint remover. And I just pour it in a bucket. i got a five gallon bucket here. I just pour it in there. I set the valve cover in there and leave it in. And then overnight, and then when you take it out, just shake it out over a little bit, you can see how it nicely dissolves the paint. So the paint is completely dissolved. I don't have to worry about using a aircraft paint remo remover, which is very toxic and pretty, uh, pretty hazardous. So all I have to do is just, just take these and flip them over. Put them in here upside down. Now I can do the other side. That'll be nice and clean. All I have to do is rinse it off with the water and it'll come right off. But to strip paint and powder coat, so if you have powder coat, they sell chemicals for both. Paint and powder coat stripping, and you can see this comes right off. Stuff works awesome. Now the next thing I want to do is I want to start to collect my small parts. And the small parts are like the rocker arms that are on this rail here. I'm going to take these apart. I'm going to pull out the screw for the adjustment. I'm going to take these all apart and clean these. Now you can see that the, since I, I'm changing the valves and the heads, these rockers are kind of seated and you can see how they're worn from the valves that were in the engine. So what we're going to have to do is clean this up, clean up the surface, machine this surface to clean up these rocker arms so that when they sit on the new valves they sit properly. Uh, that way setting the lash will be easier so I have to clean these parts up to um, so I can clean them up and machine them. But first I have to take this assembly apart and I'll show you what, I'll do, what I do with all my small parts. Now if you have a Studebaker and you're taking yours apart, I just want to show you how this comes apart. There's a cotter key in the end, a cotter pin, you just straighten and take that off. And there's this outside ring which has the oil, oil grooves in there. Then there's this uh, bent washer, which is a, it's called a Belleville washer. And it just puts spring tension, it acts like a spring. And then there's a flat washer, flat washer goes on there. And then your rocker arms will slide right off, like that. So I have the rocker arm like that, and I have to take out the adjustment screws, so I'll take out these adjustment screws on all of them. And then I'll just take out this bolt, take out the bolt, like that. Now these springs, the spring keepers, you got to watch those. So the next thing to come off is the... the hub like that, that's for the bolt down and there's the bolt for the valve cover so I got that take that off, then there's a washer that goes inside that spring, inside that spring I'm going to take my spring off just like that, so I take the spring off and then I can go for my next go for my next uh, rocker arm now what I have here is, what you can do is go to Walmart for 15 bucks and you get a nice stainless steel uh, strainer like this. It's just a colander for 15 bucks and uh, it's excellent for holding your parts. So I'm going to take all my parts and I'm going to put them in this colander. Sit those in there. Except for the rocker arms because i got to take those apart. Got my screw here. So I've got that on the end. Taking that apart. Put that in there to clean that up. Next 
this one will come off here. You can see there's a little detent in there. That's how the, you see a little detent. That little thing in there is where the screw goes through, the bolt. And that's what holds these all together. So, another one of my bolts. Oop. Take this off. Take that part off, like that, one of those come off. And then another rocker arm comes off, spring comes off, and then the next rocker will slide off. Now, there's one in the other end here, so I'm going to take the other end apart. I'll take this all apart, and we'll come back when I take the rockers apart. And just for you guys who are taking notes as you rebuild yours, you see the cotter pin in the bottom there. It's going to bend my cotter pin, cotter pin straight. I wish this one came out as, out as easy as the other side. But it's a standard cotter pin, so if you break it, don't worry about it. It's not a special size or anything. You don't have to, don't have to scour the Studebaker world to find a cotter pin. Cotter pin. Got my cotter pin out. And again, the other side, same thing. Got the washer with the oil on there. The Belleville washer is going to come off. And then the flat washer. Then that exposes another washer on this side. And then my rocker arms will come off just like that. The reason you have to take this apart is because you have to clean inside this thing. Because it's all full of oil. All the oil holes get filled up. So we got to clean inside this. Now this, for this particular step here, you don't have to, but I like to keep my parts separate. So when I put the parts in the basket here, it put the parts in the basket, like the lotion. It puts the lotion in the basket. I just take, put some aluminum foil in here, just to separate the parts. So I got all the parts from one side, and I can put the parts from the other side in here. And I'm kind of neurotic about putting parts in, so I... I always uh, count the parts to make sure that I have the right amount of parts I'm putting in to account for them all, including, including the bolts. Make sure they're all there. And put the lifters in, then we'll go put it in the, uh, the solution. Alright, now I'm only going to do a few parts at a time. I'll do the valve train parts. i got the crank gear in there. And um, I'm just going to fill it up with solvent, cleaning solvent. And in order to do that, I'm using parts washing solvent, cleaner degreaser. Uh, this is pretty expensive stuff. It's uh, the five gallon bucket was $105 at um, Advanced Auto Parts. So you buy it five gallons at a time. And uh, it's a lot cheaper than buying small amounts. And this does a good job at removing that, that oil and that grease. Now, a tip for you. When you pour out a five gallon bucket, don't pour this way because you get the chug. You turn it around. And you put the spout on the top. It will pour smooth. So, I'm just going to fill this up. Now, you want to make sure that the solvent you're using will not dissolve the plastic container because you will have a huge mess. I've already used this plastic container before, so I know the, that this parts cleaner will not dissolve the uh, plastic. So, I'll fill this up and I'll let this sit overnight and then we'll come back and we'll see how clean the parts are. Alright, let's see how our parts turned out. Again, you want to get yourself some gloves, just some nitrile gloves, a box of gloves from anywhere. And Alright, first shaft is pretty clean. Now what I have here is just a, a Scotch-Brite pad, a red Scotch-Brite. And I'm just going to use that to polish off some of the more baked on parts that are uh, that are baked on here. You can see in the groove here. It's going to sort of go like this. Clean that up. And it'll come out pretty clean. So the question is how clean? How clean do you want to get your parts? Um, and that's really up to you. I get them as clean as possible 
without destroying the integrity of the part. Meaning, I wouldn't clean this up with sandpaper or anything that will destroy the base material. I just want to get it clean enough so when I go to reassemble it, it will assemble easily and I want to have it clean enough so that I can identify any severely worn parts or anything that might need to be cleaned up using a machining process. But this is looking really good. Now for, let's set this aside, for grooves like this, I'll just use a toothbrush first. You, when you clean parts, you want to use the least aggressive method possible. You do that first. Then if you can't get it clean for something like this, and it, and it takes a little patience, just take a little patience, if you can't get it, I'll switch to a maybe a brass brush. Something that's going to be softer than the base material. So I'm going to switch to that. So that's how I'll clean a part like this. And I'm just going to take this. Now, now the important part is the inside of this also has to be clean. And as I go like this and drain the uh, cleaning part cleaning fluid through it, I can see that you can see how it's coming out very dirty. So I have to make sure the inside of this is clean. So I'll flush this out, and not only will I flush it out, I will make sure that the inside is clean. I'll blow it out with some compressed air. So that's how I clean these kind of parts. Now, if you're, I just wanted to add this: if you're uh, redoing your Studebaker engine, which is very similar. To the old Ford type engines, these uh, these rocker shafts have plugs in the end, and uh, I want to thank Brad Bez on the Studebaker Driver Forum. He provided a short list of things that should be done, and uh, I'm going to do all those. So I, thanks a lot, Brad. Thanks for showing or putting that list. It was really helpful. These plugs on each end are easy to get out. I want to clean inside, make sure that all these holes are clean, and. It's just a plug in the end, on each end. Uh, if you have to put them back in and you didn't measure, they're 475 thousandths deep into the cup. That's how deep you press the new ones in. And the easy way to get these plugs out is you just, just drill a hole in the middle with a, a big easy out and you just turn it and it comes right out. So now that I have both of these plugs out, I can clean inside and outside of this rocker shaft. So now that I have all the parts cleaned off as good as I can with the uh, cleaning solvent, I still want them cleaner. I like them to be like factory brand new. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to spray them with oven cleaner. I have them in a separate bowl here, and I'm going to spray them with some oven cleaner. Of course, it's pretty to fall, right? You can already see that oven cleaner is going to start to work that grease off. And the oven cleaner is going to break down that really caked on oil. So I'm going to spray the oven cleaner on there and let it sit a while. For parts like this timing chain cover, I'll put it in the sink in the, in the shop or you can just put it anywhere and, and spray some oven cleaner on it. And what the oven cleaner is going to do is going to loosen up all of that caked on grime and dirt and grease from the engine. And then all you have to do is rinse it off and you can see it uh, pretty clean. It loose, just loosens it up. And I like to do this with these parts because I really don't want to put it in my parts washer and have all of this big big dirt uh, making my cleaning fluid more dirty than it needs to be. But it's just like a pre-wash step and it works pretty good. You see how clean it already already is. One more uh, one more spray right here and this will be nice and clean and when I put it in my parts washer it will be very easy to, to clean off.
Now you can see after the uh, <clears throat> after the oven cleaner parts come out pretty clean. And they're really clean. But just to make sure, I'm rinsing this off in hot water by the way. Hot water makes it real easy to come off. And I really degrease at this point. But I want to make sure that I get every last little bit of oil that's been in there for the last 54 years. So there are little holes here, lubrication holes, which are important to be clean. And Last few little parts here. I have all my all the adjusters for the uh, push rod adjustments. They're all nice and clean. And bolts, the washers. I got the springs. So I have all my parts. The lock washers right down to the last two cotter keys that were used to hold it all together. Okay, last couple parts. And they're all pretty clean. But, just to make sure I get every last bit of what I want to make these parts super clean, I'm going to put these in an oven and I'm going to bake them at 375 degrees. And I'm going to leave it in there for a few hours just to bake off all that last amount of oil. Now, luckily I have an oven in my shop where I can put these in or I can bake parts, the same oven I use for powder coating. So I have an oven I can bake my parts in. But you can put them in your oven, uh, in, your, in your kitchen, and uh, just ask your wife for permission if you can put car parts in the oven for a few hours. And if you have to ask your wife for permission to uh, put car parts in the oven, you, you married the wrong person. That's all i got to say. So I'm just going to put these in the oven, and, and when they come out, that, that should be a little cleaner. I'll do one last rinse and these parts will be absolutely clean. Now I take a look at our valve covers and see how these are cleaning up. Shake it around a little bit. Look at that. Nice and clean, all stripped off. I'm in favor of chemical stripping instead of mechanical stripping because mechanically it takes a lot of time. So if, you get, if there's a solvent where I can just stick something in there and completely strip it, I'm going to buy it because it saves a ton of time and you don't have to sit there with your hands scraping it. So valve covers, all I can do is clean them up a little bit and uh, I can be blast the outside and powder coat. Well these are ready to roll. Okay so this is how the valve covers came out and these were just chemically dipped and I rinsed them with water and that's how nice they come out. Uh, now all I have to do is bead blast these so I can powder coat those. Now the next part, the parts that were in the oven. Now these parts here were in the oven for about uh, oh, just a couple hours is enough at 375 degrees. And the reason you put them in the oven and bake it is to get the oil on there to be nice and, and crispy. It, it, it dries it out and it makes it real flaky. It turns into, see how easy that comes off? So if you, if you don't have a blast cabinet you can take it off mechanically. You can use a wire wheel the best you can and clean off these parts. Uh, if you don't have a wire wheel or if you don't have any, a, a bead blast cabinet, you can use a vibratory cleaner like this. I got this one from Eastwood and this works great. I use this for all the time. You can either use that to clean out parts or you can put, I put parts in there in polished hardware. This thing is really awesome. I mean, if you want, you should get one of these things if you work on cars because you can, you can throw the media in there and throw your hardware in there and either clean it and polish it. Work, those things work fantastic and they're not that expensive. All right, there's Shelby. Look at it. There's security. Look at that. I'll like a light. Even though I'm making all this noise. Oh, you can hear her snoring. Snore. Oh yeah, she's snoring. Okay, so we've got the vibratory cleaner. You can do that. Now I bead blasted my parts, my blast cabinet, and you can see how nice these came out. If you look at the parts from the how this is how they came out of the oven, and this is how they look after blasted. 
after your parts cool down when you take them out of the oven you can just lay them out and take a look at them and uh, after your wife cools down from stinking the entire house up with burning oil you take them out to your shop and clean them up and you clean them up and they can come out looking brand new that's a brand new part so here's all the parts I have that uh, that I cleaned up so I got one side just baked this side baked and cleaned up and you can see how nice and brand new all the parts come out uh, and finally the uh, cam cover now you remember how dirty this thing was and all I did was spray it with oven cleaner rinse it once sprayed it with oven cleaner again rinse it again with a little and I got a little wire brush just clean out some of the corners there's a little black paint there I'll have to clean off but this is something I can throw in my blaster clean up again and have it ready to install and uh, before I paint the engine so those are the cleaning methods I use chemical stripping rinsing with water uh, sitting with in a part cleaning solution and then baking to get the oil carbonized, uh, carbonized it actually turns into carbon so that it's easy to come off and then and these parts were just I did these by hand I didn't do anything with these except for run these through the, the parts washer and then clean them since uh, since a polished since this is a polished hardened part uh, steel part I uh, just cleaned it with a scotch bright pad and blasting bead blasting or wire wheeling after and then um, oven cleaner with water so those are the basic methods I use to clean parts and that's pretty much what you can use for any part that you take off your engine but the objective is to take your parts and get them as clean as possible so when you assemble your engine put it back together you're starting with all fresh clean parts so there you have it guys that's how you clean all the parts for your engine or the methods you use to clean all the parts to, to the engine. I know I didn't show cleaning all the parts, but I just wanted to show you the methods, the chemical dipping, the uh, washing, baking, blasting, those kind of methods. So you take any one of those methods, you're going to be able to clean all the parts for your engine, including the engine compartment. You can spray oven cleaner in your engine compartment and watch all the, all the stuff drip off, all the grease and stuff drip off. It's going to strip paint, so don't put it on any paint. But uh, you can use those methods to clean any part of the car, anything you take apart. So that's what I wanted to show you how to clean your parts. Now, the block, the head, and the crank are still at the machine shop. So I clean all these parts while they're being machined. That way, when I get the parts back and when I get the engine back, I can start putting it back together. I don't have to waste time. That's how I get it done quickly. So you can use any of these methods to clean all the parts for your engine, and then you'll have great results. All these parts are like brand new. Um, Thanks again to all you guys on the Studebaker Drivers Club website. I, I looked at the comments and I appreciate all the input. And I know the owner of the vehicle appreciates all the input. I'm trying to do as much as I can. Oh, and incidentally, this car uh, and what I'm doing here was featured uh, in the Buffalo News. If you go to buffalocars.com, there's a thing called Corbin's Corner. And there's a little thing there about Pete's Garage and working on these projects here and how I do this. Just an FYI for you. So thanks for all your comments and suggestions. I really appreciate it. And your text messages. It helps me out a lot. Um, I'm really enjoying doing this uh, engine for my friend. And it's working out really, really well. Uh, next, we, we have to rebuild the oil pump. I'm looking off the screen here. I got the oil pump I got to rebuild. I got uh, some other things I got to work on. So I'm working on the next videos, ideas of what I'm going to do. If you have any suggestions, anything you'd like to see, let me know. I'll try and include that. And uh, I appreciate all your comments and text messages. Uh, let me get back to cleaning all these parts. I'll get the parts from the machine shop and we'll start putting this engine back together. Thanks for stopping by Pete's Garage.